Hello students. So today we will discuss about uh, solubility of alloys. Now, what is an alloy basically? When an element uh, B is dissolved in element A. So, what happens is that the B atoms they replace some of the A atoms, and this system is called an interstitial solid solution. Sorry, this is called a substitution in solid solution. That means we have A is here initially. And when another element B is coming, it actually is replacing uh, the A by getting inside one of the position. This is called a substitution, solid solution. It substitutes one of the atoms. Apart from that, it may so happen that instead of uh, doing this, the B may enter a uh, interstitial position. So then that will be called an interstitial solid solution. Now we shall mainly concern, we shall mainly discuss about substitution solid solution right now and later on we will go into the interstitial solid solution. Oh. Okay, now uh, now this uh, substitution solid solution may actually occur over uh, a limited uh, range of composition to so, substitutional mm, solid solution is not a, a limited range of composition. Now, a solid solution at the end of a binary phase diagram. Now, we, if we consider a phase diagram of A and B, uh, one at the end of phase diagram is called a, a terminal solid solution. While the one at the middle is called an uh, intermediate solid solution. Now there are uh, certain solid solutions, for example, uh, copper nickel. Then we have uh, silver and gold. These uh, 
alloy systems or these binary alloy systems uh, they exhibit a continuous salt solution now for a system to show a continuous salt solution uh, now why what do we mean by continuous resolution is that there is a uh, no uh, change in uh, structure so means so what continuous means no change in structure now to be able to show this sort of uh, property um, there are few requirements first of all the very first requirement is uh, they should have uh, same structure at least similar structure and uh, the radii difference or delta r should not be uh, more than 15% so in this case only a binary system may exhibit a continuous self solution so considering the examples that we have uh, stated uh, let us try to find out uh, or let us try to understand how the radius of uh, these components are so as in the case of uh, silver gold system uh, silver is having a radius of about uh, 4.0856 Armstrong whereas a gold is having a radius of about uh, 4.0783 Armstrong so you can see that the radius are pretty close to each other and also both of them are face centered cubic. So the two uh, factors or the two rules that we have told earlier they are satisfied so they can form a continuous solution. Um, now besides these general factors there are two more factors responsible or required to form a continuous solution. Those are uh, valency And the second one being uh, the chemical properties. Now let us uh, consider a hypothetical case where uh, you have a phase diagram like this of uh, silver and copper sorry silver and gold and in the x-axis we have the atomic percentage of silver and uh, in the y-axis we have the lattice constant which is expressed in Armstrong so There is a law called uh, Weygaard's law, according to which uh, a negative as well as positive deviations from this line is observed. Right. Now, the lattice parameter of a solid solution uh, is approximately equal to the rule of mixtures of the two constituents, lattice parameter at the same time. That means, if you would like to find out the lattice parameter of uh, silver and gold combined, it will be, um, for, say, for that matter, A and uh, 
V combined. So the combined lattice parameter, you can call it A, 1 minus x, Vx, uh, is equal to 1 minus x, lattice parameter of A, plus x into lattice parameter of B. A and B are lattice A, A and A B are lattice parameters of atoms A and B. So this is a lattice parameter uh, A A and uh, this is a lattice parameter A B. So the rule of mixture is being followed here where the composition of each of the atoms is uh, has got an effect on the uh, combined lattice parameter. Now coming to the solubility aspect or uh, or how well the atoms are visible from a mixture uh, now when uh, like atoms uh, attract each other so, uh, more strongly than aluminum more strongly than unlike atoms so when the solubility uh, so when there are like atoms like atoms by like atoms being having the similar structure, uh, not much of a difference in radius. Then their solubility is high. Whereas unlike atoms, the solubility is low. Now in the opposite case, uh, with the dominant attraction, I mean, when, when, when unlike atoms, A, and B, if they are unlike, however, if there is a attraction between them, what we form is uh, a super lattice alloy. A super lattice we form. A super lattice, we mean that, what do we mean is that although the atoms are different, but since of uh, even if they are unlike, they are really well uh, mixing. That means uh, the substitution of the atoms in alloy is very good so that there is no change in the structure at all. So this is actually roughly what we mean by a super lattice. Super lattice also, only the term is taken from thin films where when we have a bit actually growth. So one layer of film, suppose formed, which another layer of film formed, so this layer number two, when it is getting deposited over layer number one, they have to be crystallographically uh, compatible. So that is actually means by super lattice. So the same concept is being used in the case of an alloy. And the compatibility, structural and chemical compatibility of the E atom is uh, matching with the B atom, forming a super lattice structure. Now, uh, temperature has a very important role to play in the solubility and the phases that are being formed. So, suppose uh, the work required uh, for the two metals to combine is uh, phi and we multiply it by z where z is the coordination number the nearest number of neighbors that stands for coordination number or uh, nearest number of neighbors so phi is the energy so it has to be multiplied by z phi now this z phi is again uh, equal to uh, z into phi a 
plus 5 bb minus 2 pi ab pi a uh, it means the energy required to dissociate an a atom from an a atom basically is the dissociation energy now the same is for 5b dissociation energy required to separate two b atoms and phi a b the energy required to dissociate an a atom with a b atom now this is actually the energy of solution now there are certain cases uh, which might be considered when the value of phi is greater than zero that means uh, phi a a and phi b b combined are greater than 2 phi a b which means that the energy required to dissociate the two atoms from each other is more than the energy required to dissociate an atom from the another it means that the atoms are uh, attract each other more strongly than they attract unlike atoms. So atoms attract each other more strongly then they do for unlike atoms and the opposite is the case when phi is less than zero it means that uh, there is a attraction between unlike atoms the attraction between unlike atoms is predominant and a very good example of this is your uh, silver and gold system that we talked now suppose there are uh, n a number of a atoms and there are n b number of b atoms and the total number of atom is of course na plus nb so the concentration of uh, a atoms well let's see a is Na by N and Cb is Nb by N which is equal to actually 1 minus Ca. Now the free energy of the alloys, now let us assume that Ca is equal to C, so we are mainly considering the 
concentration of uh, air atoms into the big chair. Now, uh, free energy. How the alloy, if we could write, is uh, F is equal to E minus TS. Where E is the enthalpy and T is the temperature, this is the entropy. And now, for equilibrium concentration, of course, uh, del F by uh, del C, where C is the concentration at a particular temperature should be equal to zero that means there won't be any shouldn't be any change in the value of free energy with respect to change in concentration now again this uh, free energy has got certain components so f uh, actually the enthalpy has got certain components instead of writing e what we write here is e uh, binding plus E vibrating. So there is a vibrational energy, there is a binding energy minus also the entropy has got two combinations one is your thermodynamic entropy and the other one is your configurational entropy. So CF stands for configuration. Now, if there is A attraction between A and A, so it means that concentration of C into concentration of C so that makes it C squared. And there is attraction between B and B, so concentration will be 1 minus C squared. Higher if there is a concent there is attraction between A and B, so it will be uh, twice of C into 1 minus C. Now the two factor is being introduced see, because uh, we count AB twice. So an AB attraction is equal to an B attraction. So since we are counting it twice, so that is why the two factor is being introduced here. Coming to this configurational entropy, this is actually basically uh, according to Bullman equal to uh, minus kt log n factorial divided by n a factorial into n b factorial. That means the combination of the different atoms possible using the Stirling's formula to the relationship and it says that ln n factorial is equal to L and then n uh, when n is large specifically the Stirling's approximation so we will use relationship. So by putting these values here, what we actually obtain at the end is a C divided by 1 by C is equal to exponential minus Z by multiplied by 1 minus 2c divided by 2k t. However, if the concentration of c is small, so let me write uh, this once again c by 1 minus c is equal to exponential minus z 
phi 1 minus 2 c divided by 2 k t if c is small concentration is small then this reduces to c is equal to exponential minus z pi by 2 k t we plot uh, 2 k t by z phi with respect to uh, the concentration we obtain a plot like this so uh, below it you have a phase mixture homogeneous solution now the temperature below the curve actually represents corresponds to uh, the temperature which is too low to give a true solid solution what we have assumed here is that phi a uh, is equal to phi b b now in practical cases what happens is that a great part of the solubility curve uh, may lie above the melting point okay about the melting point so uh, only those part entered the that are close to either of the pure metals so that is that is an important point we need to uh, consider uh, 